about. Do you have notes? Do you have notes? I'm speaking to you now about the content of those conversations. I'm asking you if you took notes. Is that appears as if you refer to that binder a lot. Would it, uh, uh, in its entirety, can you present it to the committee? These notes are for my own personal use. And you don't take notes as a as a former police officer of decades. You don't take detailed notes on your meetings. I've always been very careful in 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 you know. I, I, Carrying any any notes or paper with respect to matters of significant confidence. That was a wild scene last night. A lot of questions for Christian Freeland and Bill Blair, two ministers who were very critical members of the government when they invoked the Controversial Emergencies Act, but they didn't get give a lot of answers last night at the committee. That was the emergency preparedness minister testified to the Joint Committee alongside. Uh, Christian Freeland, the Deputy Prime Minister, saying, you know, we didn't even take notes on some key briefings as to why we need it, so we can't show you any notes. Look, the committee is studying the first ever use of the Emergencies Act, and, and they're trying to get some answers. But so far, the government's saying, look, we do not have any notes on it. And what about the minister who's been in the front of this, Marco Mendicino? As we showed you last night, he has repeatedly said the government acted on the advice of police, but the police say, we never gave them the advice. And last night, Bill Blair said, you know what? They never even asked for it. Um, it's the government's call. Now Marco Mendicino is facing calls by the opposition to resign. Our special guest on the program today was on the committee last night, and he joins us today on our press gallery alongside um, reporters Stephanie Levitz with the Toronto Star's Ottawa Bureau and Zian Lum is a reporter with Politico. And again, our special guest is the ethics critic for the NDP, Matthew Green, who we just featured there. Great to have all of you here. Mr. Green, I want to start with you because there's calls for Marco Mendicino to, to, to resign because allegedly, according to the opposition, the Conservatives, he's misled Parliament. Um, uh, do you believe that you who voted for the Emergencies Act were misled by Minister Mendicino or others who have said we've acted on the advice of police and police told us to invoke the act and so we did? Uh, how, do you believe that you've been misled or Parliament's been misled? No, I mean, at this point, they're splitting hairs. It feels like a diversion from what I think is the Conservative Party's culpability in this, but... It should be noted that the minister, and in fact all ministers who've been present at that committee, have refused to be forthcoming with very basic information, and that is a significant and serious ca cause for alarm. Okay, but, but do you feel then that the NDP were led down the path? Like, here you are, you voted for the Emergencies Act, you thought it met the threshold, and have you got any evidence from Minister Mendicino, Minister Blair, Minister Freeland? Have they given you any transparent information that you can confidently tell Canadians, yes, um, they met the threshold to invoke the Emergencies Act? I mean, we confirmed the Emergencies Act after it was invoked, having witnessed and experienced, quite frankly, what thousands of people in Ottawa had experienced and based on information that was made publicly available. I will say, though, that no, this government has not, I think, adequately pleaded its case to the Canadian public, regardless of what side of the issue you're on, with just the basic information. We had a finance minister who couldn't quote any specific economic impacts when even the city of Ottawa came forward with some numbers. It's quite concerning, quite frankly, given the seriousness of this, the historic nature of it, the special composition of the committee, that time and time again, witness after witness, they just refused to provide even basic information. Let me bring you Stephanie Levitt. So, so now we've got, and we showed this last night in the program, we showed it again, Marco Mendicino on multiple occasions, February 21st and then on in May, saying they acted on the advice of the police and no police chief, RCMP, the Ottawa police have saying we never asked it. Then Bill Blair said, you know, actually nobody asked for it. So what do you make of the calls for the resignation and, and if, is this a misunderstanding or a misleading? has to be fundamentally where's the accountability and where does that buck stop I mean if the New Democrats with, with apologies here to, to Mr. Green if the New Democrats are going to prop up the Liberal government ongoing while at the same time argue that no the government has not met the threshold for invoking this historic piece of legislation then do you pull down the government over it I mean at what point do Canadians rise up and say hey the government lied to us and when it came to this historic again historic use of this legislation Ought not there be some accountability for this if the government cannot convincingly make the case that it needed to use it? It's a matter of precedence what they've done. And so if the Liberals can't 
justify it through facts, data, science, whatever they'd like to use to justify it, then what's to stop another government from doing it this, you know, for some other reason? I think it's a very serious matter of parliamentary accountability that the Liberals put all of their cards on the table here and explain to Canadians specifically why they needed this piece of legislation. Yeah, Jean, what is your what is your view of this? Um, you know, Minister Mendicino explicitly had said they're acting on the advice of police. Police said we didn't give them advice, and now we're hearing well they just wanted powers. They're not supposed to invoke it, so we do that job. Um, is this misleading or misunderstanding? Quote splitting hairs, as Mr. Green says. Well, I think the proof is in the pudding, but just the problem is we haven't seen the pudding yet. And the committee tried to find pieces of it yesterday. Uh, but I want to, you know, pick up on the accountability piece that Steph kind of picked up on and kind of return to that uh, clip that you started the, the segment with. Uh, you know, I skipped dinner time to watch this committee. And, you know, I sh in retrospect, I should have eaten my dinner because the deputy prime minister didn't tell me anything new, per se. Uh, it was basically a master class in self-preservation. Uh, Freeland was unwilling to supply finance documents uh, when asked by MP Green and others on the committee. And uh, everything she said was largely a pastiche of what has been already said in previous statements and references to you know, materials already on the public record. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I get the reflex that, you know, maybe you don't want to make news, but, you know, it's a choice to provide testimony, to add value to an investigative process um, versus coming off as, you know, making a mockery of it or a potential mockery of it. Uh, in the second block, um, you had the clip of uh, Bill Blair. Uh, it was his, um, you know, turn in the hot seat, and uh, he was candid and kind of, you know, forthcoming in some of the answers that were, uh, that he provided to committee. But it was also very incredible to witness uh, the public safety minister's confidence in non-apologetic tone when he said, yeah, uh, I don't take notes. Uh, that was a really revealing moment. Um, there's an entire culture and whole work, whole like workflows uh, on the Hill uh, that are designed to kind of minimize paper trails. And that pre-existed uh, the invocation of the Emergency Act. And that pre-existed the pandemic too. Uh, so my takeaway from the committee was that, you know, cabinets, uh, paper trail allergy uh, continues to influence present day operations, including exceptional circumstances where decision makers uh, are mulling the invocation of unprecedented uh, emergency measures. And, you know, that was both incredible and disappointing to witness uh, because those are uh, reflexive of systemic and intentional exercises that undermine accountability. So, Mr. Green, just do you believe this? We don't have any notes. Um, is this going to no. undermine credibility, which would raise the question that, that you don't believe them, but does it raise the question, how are you going to get a, a credibility, uh, accountability from a government that you support? Well, listen, the confidence and supply agreement is something else. What we're talking about right now is the Emergency Act Review Committee. I think anybody who's watching it knows that I'm doing a good job holding this government to account. We have unlimited parliamentary powers to send for documents, people, and evidence. That is established in jurisprudence. We have legal opinion to that fact. We will be using every single tool that we have available to ensure that this government provides with candor and clarity the information that our committee was constructed to uh, to, but you don't believe them. Review. I just want to be clear. When you say there's no notes, do you, are you saying that they're they're no. lying? That I they actually have it. notes, or that the staff? It. No, it's unbelievable, okay, so Evan. It's unbelievable. And when I hear the minister say he himself personally didn't take notes, that's fine. But I can't believe that in that room they didn't have senior staffers taking notes. And so what we need to do is get a hold of the notes. Clearly the ministers who were present had a binder full of notes. So let's start there. Let's get to the information and let's find out exactly what they knew, when they knew it, and what they did about it. Steph, Steph I, I mean, look, Parliament's going to rise, in, I don't know, this week, next week, I don't know, but how big a political problem is this now? You've got Mr. Mendicino, uh, and the, the Conservatives calling for his resignation for misleading. Um, how serious is this uh, right now politically, and how does it cut politically? Well, I mean... You know, to pick up on, again, a point that Mr. Green raised before about the Conservatives sort of using this as a, a political cover for their original support of the convoy, right? And, and some of them really speaking up in favor of the messaging coming from the Freedom Convoy, dismissing the anti-government sentiment, the anti-establishment sentiment that was there as nothing more than a few bad apples. 
um, you know, this is easy for them to just, you, sometimes in politics, it's a pretty cheap call to say so-and-so must resign, right? It, it's pretty easy and it grabs a lot of headlines. Um, can the Conservatives continue to politically weaponize this throughout the summer? I mean, they're heading into, you know, the crunch of their le leadership race. And that's going to occupy certainly the Conservative rank and file. We also, of course, have the, <clears throat> excuse me, the more broader public inquiry into all of this or the public commission that is going to spool up its work. So it's not like the story is going away, even though the Commons is going to break for the summer. And again, I mean, it, it becomes a question, I think, in the minds of many Canadians. There's those of us who live in Ottawa, witness this firsthand, and, you know, may have had a visceral response to what was happening, calls for action, wanting something to be done. That's one piece of it. But the second piece of it, again, is the government choosing to invoke for the first time these historic and unprecedented measures to seize people's bank accounts, to you know, make tow truck drivers move in, do all of these things. And it has to be considered more broadly than that. Was it an overreach of government power? And I hope that Canadians are thoughtful about that question, even if they sort of dismiss the idea, oh, it was just a bunch of protests in right. Ottawa that needed to get cleared. Okay, I, I got to leave it there for our special guest, Mr. Green. First of all, I really appreciate Thank Matthew you. Green joining us as our special guest on the panel.